This series of videos is asking the question on how Grand Theft Auto San Andreas seems to stay at the same price for multiple consoles over the last 15 years. As opposed to games which have just released and are now selling for less. In fact, they might even be really popular and selling for less. To properly help you understand this idea, I decided to show you something called a video game moment in my mind. We have Link. He's just running around a nice, cold area. And he's just kind of enjoying himself. Or, I am anyway, I'm playing the game. And I just ran around looking for stuff. Though I'll be honest, I, I had an ultimate goal. But look, it's a very livable world. And then you look out, and you go, yeah, this is what I want. Let's do this. And he jumps, and there's a giant 3D world out there for him to explore. He can find what he needs to find. He can go at any rate he wants. You can do anything you want. That's the concept of the video game moment. Everything is provided for you, and then you're just allowed to go and explore it. The great games are ones where you go and every inch is full of something for you to see, for you to enjoy, for you to ponder. To give you an example, I was once playing the Dreamcast and thought, man, it would be great if I could take all the great Dreamcast games and put them into one game. Just set them in the crazy taxi level, have Sonic running around, have people doing Street Fighter moves all around you, having, you know, deathmatch levels, just have it all happening at the same time. Each person in kind of their own world, but still in this giant world. If that sounds familiar, well, that's essentially what Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is. It's just a bunch of things you can do in a giant open world. They even have taxis. They even have the ability to go deathmatch each other, though that's a bit of a mod. But that's really not what a video game moment is. It's when all those things are set up, and then some random thing happens. It's not because, oh, somebody wrote a script for it. It's because as you were playing, just all the AI, all the open world opened up, and you found something cool. Something you could go do and enjoy. This is why open world is so difficult. Because you have to put in so much for it to be enjoyed. Many game designers don't know how to make that kind of a world. They can make a smaller world, and many of them are more movie makers than they are game makers. So a small area where you have a, a nice bit of gameplay and then a lot of video seems more their style. So that's what they make. They make these small vignettes, an idea, a concept, and they move you forward. It feels kind of open, but the reality is you constantly feel pushed forward, as if there's one linear hallway for you to go, and they want you to see each and every single cinematic that they can, because it's their world, and they work so hard on it. It also means that once you finish the game, you don't want to play it anymore. You know what this story is about, and you already know what the gameplay is like, so you're not going to play it as often as that giant open-world game. One of the reasons why the giant open world game is so effective is that you can just stop, watch the AI, watch the grass. If it's done well, there's just a ton of stuff you can see. And you can just stand there, enjoy the view, enjoy what you're looking at, and just feel like you're immersed in this world and you're a character in it. And every few inches, every few feet, you see something you want to go do. And you can go do this. You just look out and can jump into the world. You see something off in the horizon and you go to it. That's what a giant open world, well-made game is like. And that's how it works. That's why people play it. That's why people enjoy playing it. And frankly, if you start looking, almost all the top games being sold for decades are these kind of giant open world games. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is the best version of urban and modern exploration 
than any other game out there. It has all the opportunities. It, you have the ability to ride a bike. You have the ability to ride motorbikes, cars, anything you want. It's just that open. You're able to play at the style you want and do whatever you want. There's the ability to explore. Every little inch has some feeling that people live there. Now, do people actually live there or are they just AIs walking by? The answer is they're just AIs walking by. However, for what it is, it is the absolute best you can play, which means that it is a must-have or a continuously selling type game because people enjoy it that much. So then why are people making these small story-driven games? The answer is the companies making them truly believe this is what you want, or that's their style. We'll explain it later in the next video. Well, that's all I have for you today. I wanted to say thank you to everybody uh, who has viewed this. If you liked it, please share it with others. I don't get a lot of views. I'm not a big YouTuber right now. Also, if you could, hit subscribe, press the little button, whatever you can. It, it really helps. What else? Oh, the clip with Zelda or Blink jumping off the cliff and flying out. I have been wanting to do that clip for a long time. So it brings me a bit of joy letting you see that. So until next time, catch you later.